Welcome back to another episode of History's Biggest Villains. I know I haven't done this series in a while, but I want to go over the story of a man who is, in my humble opinion, the closest thing to the devil that we can even think of. Joseph Fritzl. Joseph Fritzl was born in Austria in 1935 to a mother who repeat mother was terrible. She would repeatedly beat him. She would leave him in the house for hours at a time. His father was a war veteran who was eventually killed in World War II. In 1956, when he was 21, he married 17-year-old Rosemary, whom he would father 17 children by. Joseph's criminal history definitely started early in his life as in 1967 he was charged with the rape of a 24 year old woman and in 1969 he was also involved in another case of the rape of a 21 year old woman the main recipient of the abuse in our story elizabeth fritz who was born in 1966 and joseph's abuse of her started in 1977 when she was only 11 years old elizabeth she finishes her compulsory education at age 15 and then she learns to be a waitress she goes to waitress school in january of 1983 she actually would run away from a, she would run away from her job and she would go and had hiding with a co-worker in vienna three weeks later she was actually found by the police and returned back home but little did she know while she was running away, her father was building the, the dungeon that she would spend the next two plus decades in, unbeknownst to her family, right underneath the nose of her own mother. The fateful day, August 28th, 1984, when Elizabeth Fritzl disappeared. It all started when Elizabeth was supposed to help Joseph carry a door down in the basement. So basically she put the door frame she, she lined up the door to the door frame, and while she was doing that, Joseph took an ether soaked towel, you know, put it up against her face, and she was unconscious. And threw her into, he chained her up, he chained her up to a pipe in the dungeon that he had built. He had spent all this time building. And the reason he was even able to build this, because he got a permit, and he told people that it was going to be an atomic bomb shelter, because you have to think, this is the 60s, this is Cold War times, everyone's heightened up because they think it's a lot of nuclear tension between America and Russia and it's a whole lot, it's, a, it's a lot of nuclear tension so that would nobody it wouldn't raise suspicion to build an atomic bomb shelter in the in your backyard it wouldn't raise any suspicion so then after August 28th obviously the police investigation ensues because Elizabeth is reported missing Joseph makes Rosemary his wife file a missing persons report but he secretly goes down into the basement to make Elizabeth write her own letters talking about how she's ran away from home and she joined a cult, a religious cult. And that and that basically gave way to, to the investigation being closed after a year. And this starts the long, hard, terrible chain of abuse over the next almost quarter of a century. It is said that Joseph sexually assaulted Elizabeth about 3,000 times in the 24 years that he kept her in the dungeon. So basically, he would he would starve her out. He would go down in the basement, give her food. He would he would rape her, and then he would go upstairs like nothing happened. Unbeknown again, unbeknownst to his own to his to the family that was already upstairs, nobody knew. They thought Elizabeth was missing. Nobody knew. And then in 1989, Joseph has the first, impregnates his own daughter, Elizabeth, and Kirsten is born in 1989. That is the first child that Elizabeth has for Joseph. Joseph does not, does not take her to a hospital. He does not offer to help her with the birth, he just gives her a towel, some 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 sharp utensils, just anything that he thinks she will need. She basically gave birth all alone in the basement. Like he had constructed this huge basement. It had a it it, it was a whole like 
another level underground. It had a, a whole a operating bathroom. It had doors like the doors were, were it had codes that only he knew. It had airlocks. It required six locked doors, two like two airlock doors, and it was a, a a door locked with an electronic code like a code that only he knew. So he had this thing secure. So there was no way anyone was getting in besides him. Um, in the following years following Kirsten's birth, three other children are born between Joseph and Elizabeth, father and daughter, uh, Stefan, Lisa, and Monica. Elizabeth does a great job with the children. Like she educates the children. She tries so hard to be a mother to her siblings sort of like her I don't know the situation is very convoluted she tries to be a mother the best mother she can he brings down the TV so they can watch TV like there's a whole private family down in the basement that his wife does not even know about he literally goes down and is has his whole entire family Elizabeth three kids these kids have never seen sunlight in their lives. They've never seen the outside. They've never seen the light of day because this is the wind. There's windows like there's no windows under down. There's no windows downstairs. So there's no way for the kids to see out there. They've never they never experienced the outside at all. And as the family grew, Joseph obviously became more and more brutal towards his family. He had definitely had a brutal history. He was a very violent person. He did beat he beat his children a lot he beat his wife a lot he would threaten the kids oh if you if you act up or if you say anything i will lock the door and never come down here and you will all will starve to death he would threaten them he would sexually abuse them every day like he would constantly taunt them with the pictures of their family having a great time outside and oh look look at what look at what we did today look at what we did and look, you're stuck down here. You're stuck down here. You can't do anything. This part probably was one of the one of the most heartbreaking things I've ever seen when I did this story. In 1996, Joseph rapes her again, rapes Elizabeth again, and she becomes pregnant with twins, um, Michael and Alexander. Unfortunately, Michael does not make it. He passes away like almost as soon as he's born due to respiratory failure, which he could have gone to the hospital and easily been, it could have easily been solved, but Joseph refused to take the babies to the hospital. So in the act that I can only equate to just pure evil, pure, just, he takes the dead baby and cremates the baby. He cremates the dead baby. So now we have a murderer, a murderer, a murderous, incestuous, just psychopath that has just. However, over the years, of course, she continued to have more children. And, and you gotta think, this is a woman with five, with six, seven children in a basement. The basement is getting too small. So he. The, Joseph developed an elaborate scheme in order to be able to reduce the size of the family that's down there, but still keep them captive. So he took, he took three of the kids that were downstairs and just put on this whole charade and acted like these kids were just dropped on the doorstep by a, and then he made Elizabeth write four false letters and fake like these kids were just they were too much of a responsibility for her and she can't take care of these kids. So I'm just letting, and of course, Rosemary is just as blind as a bat. She's, oh yes, I'm gonna take care of these kids. So so little do they know, these three kids have been in their basement the entire time. They don't know that. They don't know. Again, I can only understand, I can only imagine how heartbreaking this is for Elizabeth. She's literally been stuck for her, literally her whole adult life she literally not have any experience. 2002, the last child that Joseph would have by Elizabeth Felix was born and he was kept in the cellar. They kept him downstairs. So it's 
Joseph, Rosemary, and the plus, and their four or five, I forgot how many, I think they had like four kids, plus the other three that he took from, that he fathered by her, that he took from downstairs. And I think the way that he got caught was just such a blessing, bro. So this is April 19th, 2008. Kirsten, who is now 19 years old and still has never seen the light of day, has never seen the sun, has never seen daylight, her whole life has been that basement. She's never seen anything. She falls ill, like violently ill, almost to the point of death. So Joseph agrees to take her to the doctor, to the hospital, to a local hospital. And the doctors are wondering, like, who is this girl? What is her condition? And they look. Like she's not on any of the medical registries anywhere. Like she, there, she has no medical history. There's no records. They're not, she, she's not in the database. She's nowhere to be found. They call the police, and then they get Elizabeth. They they bring Elizabeth into custody, and then they bring Joseph into the custody. And Elizabeth tells everything. Over 24 years, there's news media outlets from all over the world just popping in because nobody believes this because this is such an absurd story. And I heard something about a, the same type of thing happening two years earlier. What's called the Co-Champ story? I'm definitely going definitely gonna to have to look into that. But nobody believes this because it's, oh, Joseph, we've never, we never thought that he was that type of guy. So here comes the trial and he's going to court covering his face. And the lawyer is trying to Make a case that Joseph did this for Elizabeth's own good. How he tried to prevent her from going into the wrong, going down the wrong path for having a terrible life. But then I think the fact that you you fathered seven children by your daughter doesn't make, doesn't give your argument any credence at all, sir. So he was sentenced to a minimum of ten years to life, which he is still currently serving. Oh, and another tidbit about Joseph's mother. I said earlier, his mother was very mean to him. His mother would hit him. His mother would tell him that he didn't want him. She often said that she only had George, oh, no, Joseph, to prove that she could have children. That to prove that she was not barren, so she had him. See, I can have kids. I, don't, I mean, I don't even really want him anymore. She would leave him. She would leave him alone in the house for hours. She would constantly pick on him and call him names and she would beat him and he kidnapped his mother in 1959 locked her in the cellar bricked brick up the window so there's no communication with the outside and kept her in kept her in his cellar until she died in 1980 so he kidnapped his mother and his daughter this man is absolute sicko right now he is still in a, in a jail in, in Sweden. Um, my latest research said that his, his health is declining. I mean, he's he's 85 years old at this point. So, you know, he's almost nearing the end. I mean, to be honest, I need, he needs to stay in there another 100 years because this man is sick and disgusting. Um, Elizabeth and all the other kids are actually in a secret location in Austria. So, They've they've obviously they've obviously chosen not to have any media coverage. Like out they they've been offered a chance to change their names. So yeah, this, that was Joseph Fritzel. The story of the man who kidnapped his daughter, kept her captive for almost a quarter century, fathered seven children from her, and showed no emotion during the trial. No emotion at all. No emotion when he cremated uh, Michael. No emotion when he came down and would beat his family. Just no emotion. So, yeah, I would say he's a very. I would say he's a villain. But anyway, uh, thank you for watching. Uh, leave a like if you enjoyed. Hit that um so hit that subscribe button if you're new to the channel. Also, don't forget to turn on my post notifications if you haven't already. But thank you. I'm out. Peace.